How do you decide where you spend your time on Facebook? Now, if you're already utilizing Facebook, you automatically have a profile. And if you have a business, it's likely that you also utilize a page and or a group. And if not, we're gonna chat through why you should consider having both. So like I mentioned, if you're on Facebook, you're gonna automatically have a profile. Now, a lot of times people refer to their profile as their page. So before we dive in, I want to define each of them for you. And then I'll give you some analogies for each. So you know what to say when you're talking about where you spend your time on Facebook. As we go through, I'm going to refer to each one as a part of your house. This will help you understand the levels of exposure and what you should post on each one. So let's start with your profile. Why do people open Facebook to begin with? They want to see their friends and their family. They want to see what they're doing. They want to be entertained. They want to be educated. But what they necessarily don't open the app for is to be sold to. So keeping this in mind, your profile should be between 80 and 90% about you. Think about your profile as the inside of your house. Who do you let inside? Majority of the time, it's your friends and family, right? Now hear me out on this. It's a really good idea to have your profile public. That way people can find you and can see what you're about. Now that doesn't mean that everything on your profile is going to be public. If you're gonna share something personal, maybe your kids or just something a little more private, you can change the privacy setting of each specific post you make. You get to choose that level of exposure for that specific post while everything else remains public. Now, that other 10 to 20% of your post, those can be about your business. So think of it this way. Your friends are scrolling through Facebook. They don't want to see ads and your business posts are like commercials on the TV. So if your friends are scrolling and all they see are commercials, what do you normally do when you see commercials? Skip or change the channel. But with Facebook, what could happen is they could either unfollow or unfriend you. Now, let's talk about optimizing your profile. So your profile picture should be a picture of you and it should be of you smiling. If you have a profile picture of your entire family or maybe it's a picture of you and your dog or you and all of your friends, whenever I get a friend request from somebody like that, I have no idea who is who in the picture and who is sending the friend request. So bottom line, Make sure your profile picture is a picture of you. Shoulders up, smiling. Now, if you're saying, Kimberly, I wanna showcase my family or I love my dog. Well, absolutely, me too. Your cover photo is where they can live. Next up is your bio. Now, a piece of advice that I've heard before about your bio is put either what people are going to see if they keep scrolling or what are some things that you can talk about for hours and never get tired of. Now, keep in mind, this is only 100 characters long and while links are clickable here, I would not put a link here. Put your link where the links are supposed to go and save this bio space for your actual bio. Next up are your personal details. This is where you can list all of your work history, any links you have, your education, where you've lived. But what I wanna point out here is you can hide some of these things. Sometimes I go to profiles and I'm scrolling and they have every place they've ever lived. They have all of their past jobs listed and it takes up the entire screen. So only list your current jobs and things you absolutely want seen in your details. Now this is a great segue into chatting about your page. Now I see so many people put their company's pages in their work history. So what happens when someone goes to your profile and they say something like, oh my gosh, I have been looking for a consultant for this company for forever and haven't been able to find anybody. And there they are. They click on that business page and where do they go? Not to you. They go to the company. So if you see any value or advantage of having a page, it's this. Put your page as your employment history. Now in regards to the house analogy, your page is like your front yard. So if you had like a flag up or a sign that says, hey, this is my business, anyone driving by can see that sign. You guys know I talk a lot about Google My Business and how it helps me to get local leads. So I want you to think about your page as the Google My Business 
on Facebook. A page is 100% public, which means that it's searchable by Google as well. Now, the main drawback with a page is that its reach is dismal, especially in the beginning, like less than 5% reach. So your page though is where you can share 100% about your business every single day, multiple times a day if you want it because it's your business page. A page also allows the ability to put money behind a post and this is called an ad. Now, this is not something I recommend doing if you aren't consistent with your page, if you aren't utilizing your page to begin with, and if you don't understand the ads process. The one piece of advice that I can give you here is if you ever see that little button that says boost post, do not click it. If you're gonna give money to Facebook, be sure to invest in a course and understand how the whole thing works and how to utilize the ad manager instead of boosting. And honestly, you can, Google Facebook ads and Facebook has really great courses that you can watch because Facebook wants you to give them your money. They want you to be successful with it so that way you'll keep giving them money. So whatever you do, just learn more about it before you start investing in Facebook ads. Another great thing is you can also start a shop with a page so that way you can tag the products you're posting about in your post. But just ensure that if your company has compliance rules about that, you stay in compliance. Now, another plus is insights on which posts are doing well. Now, if you aren't using Google My Business, pages also allow you to collect reviews. So if you don't create a page for anything else other than putting in your bio, it's to have a place to collect reviews. And last, let's talk about groups. Now, you can either create a group from your profile or you can create a group off of your page. It honestly doesn't matter how it starts. Personally, I created mine off of my profile and then I added my page. But think about your group as your backyard and you have a party going on every single day. Now, only those you allow into the backyard or extend the invite to will be able to get in. So your group, similar to a page, is a place where you can post 100% about your business. The people who are in your group, they accepted the terms whenever they said yes. I wanna be in your group, that they were signing up to see your post about your specific business. Now, some people call this their VIP group. I like to call mine my customer support group, but this is where you can share what's going on in your business first. Another great thing about groups is you get to choose the level of visibility whenever you're creating it. You can either have a public group that anyone can find and join, a private visible group. So when someone does a search for your company or maybe the specific name of your space, your group will pop up, but they won't see any post. Or you can have a private hidden group so no one can find it and it would be invite only. Now, another great thing about groups that I love are all of the organizational tools you can utilize. So if you have specific themes that you share in your group, turn those into guides, or maybe specific product categories can be a guide. You also have the ability to create different albums. So maybe if you have collections, you can have an album per collection. There are also topics, which are the same thing as hashtags in your group. And another piece I love is the pinned post or the featured post aspect. If you have something important you want your members to know about, you can pin it to the top so it's always there. And anytime you add a featured post, people get a notification. And like pages, you can also see insights into which posts or type of content are doing well so you can double down on those. Now, there are a ton of other things that we can talk about and do with all three of these, but I wanted to keep this as general as possible. So just a quick recap, your profile should remain as personal as possible. Your page is where your business lives and your group is where your customers hang out. Now, I'd love it if you would share how you use your profile, your page, and your group down below in the comments. And if you have any questions, definitely let me know. If you have friends or business besties who also are kind of curious of like, how should I be using Facebook with my personal life, with my business, definitely share it with them. If you want more videos on social media and Facebook, things like this, definitely like this video down below. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell so you get notification the next time I put out a video. And I'll see you next time.